Hello, and welcome to the East-West Goliath Library. I'm David Earl, and I'll be your host as we explore this massive sound palette of East-West's best. Doug Rogers and Nick Phoenix have been continually innovating and updating the East-West catalog. When they amassed a really large number of libraries, they decided to release a massive 32 gigabyte sample collection called Colossus. The idea was to create a massive sound bank that had a really diverse sound set across all musical fields. It'd be like having the greatest sound module on earth. Goliath is the appropriately named follow-up to Colossus. It has all of the improved sound libraries running at 64-bit in the latest engine developed by East-West called Play. Goliath now has over 40 gigabytes of 24-bit 44-1K samples. The sounds are all coming from the latest and greatest from the team at East-West in a very easy-to-use interface with the addition of professional effects and ridiculously good scripting. From classical to rock, choir to ethnic, new age to pop brass, Goliath has everything. It's the perfect introduction to all of East-West's libraries. And if you're out there gigging and you need some kind of a good sound module to take on the road with you, this is it. So let's have a listen to what Goliath has to offer. First things first, let's go over to the Play Engine, where we have Goliath loaded up in its Player view. And let's go to the Browser tab. Inside the browser, we have all these different folders. These are all the different types of instruments that are available in Goliath. Now, it's important to note that these instruments were not made specifically for Goliath. These instruments were made specifically for the libraries that fit their type, and then they were included in Goliath. So the quality of these instruments are phenomenal, coming from all of the best libraries of East-West. And as you go into each library, there may be slight differences into how they're being organized. So if I go to something like choir banks, you'll see that there's men's choir, soloists, and women's choir. If I come down to ethnic percussion, you'll see that it just has the percussion there. And if we go to something like the general MIDI bank, these are great sounds for use with general MIDI instruments. If you're doing, you know, maybe it's something like a talking book or, or something that requires general MIDI banks. Down below that, we have New Age Ensembles, Electric Piano, we've got Bösendorfer Storm Drones. These are all for use with the mod wheel. Synth pads, vintage organs. I mean, it's, it's really everything that you could need. On top of that, when we go over to the mixer here, you'll note that the mixer has our famous SSL channel strip here. We have a convolution reverb, and we have a bus compressor as well as an amp simulator and ohm aside. I'm using some of these plugins to augment the sounds. So as we play through, you'll hear that the sounds may have some effects on them and some reverbs and things like that. Those are all being generated by the Play Engine. I'm using no third-party plugins. If we go into the player now, you'll see that on the left-hand side we have a delay, reverb, and a filter. On the right we have an envelope. It's an amplitude envelope. We have something called ADT, which is automatic double tracking. What this is doing is it's emulating what it would be like to have the same recording on two different tape decks that are playing back at the same time. So the wow and the flutter of one of the tape decks is going to create that sort of natural doubling sound because it's got fluctuations in pitch and time. So it's pretty neat. We can adjust the depth and the delay and the speed and the level. Upper left, we have stereo doubling. This is more of a Haas effect where it's delaying the sides. And then we have our channel sources. Below, on the below right, we'll see articulations. These are all of the articulation layers that are loaded into the current instrument. On the left-hand side, we have our channel, transpose, sensitivity, etc., etc. This is all of our MIDI settings and how it's going to work with the host. Below, you'll see that there are yellow keys and white keys. The white keys are the ones that are actually going to play a sound. The yellow keys have no samples loaded. And when they're blue, that means that we're going to be key switching. So key switching can be used to select between different groups of sounds, different effects, different articulations. So if you ever see blue down there, you should check out the key switching. All right, let's listen to some of these sounds. 
On the left-hand side, in Logic, I have a number of different instruments. I mean, to go through all of the instruments in Goliath would be ridiculous. We'd be here all day. But what I have is a collection of drums and guitars and, and something from each library, just to show some of the uniqueness of Goliath. You know, it's great to have a giant sound set, but to have a giant sound set that's really unique is something special. So here's a 60s drum kit. So you can really hear the layering that's happening on things like the snare. You can hear how it's layered up really nicely. Just beautiful stuff. Here's a funk kit. A lot of times I'll use Goliath just to get different snares. Here's a brushed kit. The reason I chose the brush kit was because of that kick drum. Check that out. That's awesome. Now let's check out the Ludwig stage kit. Another thing I find very interesting about these kits is that when you listen closely to them, you'll notice that the imaging is very realistic. It sounds like something that's been recording in a studio that you're playing back. It doesn't sound like a sample that's had all of the life crushed out of it. I am using some effects to help it out in the mixer, but for the most part, I mean, it, it really sounds like a real kit. Going to the metal kit, I really love this kit because it gives you just the right kind of kick and snare that you need for metal. It's just great, you know, that kick will cut through any metal mix. So if you have a lot of guitars and bass and everything else, you don't want a big boomy kick, you want something that'll cut right through. This, I believe, is Nick Phoenix's personal kit. Now, the processing on that kit, there is a lot of it that's burned into the kit, and I did add a little bit. So let's go into the mixer, and I'm going to turn off the effects that I have. So to turn off, I see that there's these power buttons. I'm going to turn off the power button on the SSL and the reverb just to show you how Nick processed this kit. This is just the raw kit, no compression or anything. I mean, by itself, that is a fantastic sound. You can really hear that Nick is a drummer. Now, let's check out the studio kit. So it's properly tight. I mean, it's tight as a fist. And uh, that'd be really good for singer-songwriter stuff if you wanted a nice, tight, punchy kit. Really neat. So the drum kits alone, if you go into the drum kit library, there's just a really nice collection of kits. And honestly, I've sometimes used Goliath just for its snares, like I said. All right. Getting into the guitars, this one's called Two Guitars. So it really gives you the impression of a guitar that's, that's either been, you know, mic'd with a spaced pair, or two separate players that have been recorded at the same time. So I love that because instead of just getting an acoustic guitar, you're getting one that has some imaging built into it. We have some other classics like a classical guitar. And I intentionally left a little bit of that rumble in there. If I choose my effects and I turn off my SSL channel strip, I just think it's really neat that they leave that that kind of uh, the noise in there, the natural noise from recording. I, I, I actually love that. 
And then we have something kind of neat, a ukulele, which you don't often find in sound libraries. Yeah, so that's kind of neat. And then banjo. I love, this is my favorite banjo of all time. So again, fantastically recorded and well scripted. Getting into the choirs, this is coming from the symphonic choirs library that they did for Quantum Leap. It's a nice big burly men. Then we got a nice solo boy. And I've used that a lot of times. It's really good stuff. Some sopranos with a little bit of mod wheel thrown in to give expression. Getting into the basses, check this out. This is a really nice Rickenbacker sample. Now, I'm giving it some help. And guess what I'm helping it with? A guitar amp. If we come up here to the amp simulator, you'll notice this is Aguilar bass rig with a 421. So we're given a lot of different simulations that we can go through. And the amp simulation is recorded with different microphones. So we have a Sennheiser 421, AKG D112, which is usually kind of a kick mic. Uh, so that's really interesting. It's going to roll off a lot of the top end. RE20, which is what I'm talking to you right now. Uh, Josephson 22S. This microphone is very cool. It's a side addressed condenser cardioid microphone that was pretty much the brainchild of Steve Albini, if I remember correctly. And the mic's very cool because it's very easy to place on amplifiers. So really interesting choice. I think it's very neat that that's part of this library. A Shure SM57, which is the old standby dynamic microphone. It gives you a real punchy, bright sound. So this is kind of neat. And we have a uh, bass rig with a 421 on it. I love that one note that has a little extra dig on it. I just gave it a little bit more velocity to get that to happen. The amp simulator is pretty awesome. We've got a drive, bass, middle, and treble so this is going to be your EQ. This is going to be drive going into the preamp. And then we have our wet dry mix and a master output. Now what's kind of interesting is this particular plugin, this effect we can change from pre to post. So it'll go post channel strip or pre channel strip. It's pretty cool. All right, moving on to our next bass. We have the Lackland Fingered. Besides being a beautiful bass, this is also one of the premier performance basses is the Lackland bass. Let's have a listen to it. What's cool about Lackland basses too is they made four string and five string basses as well. If I get into the mixer here, you'll see that, you know, I'm definitely giving it a little bit of love here. I'll take the amp simulator off. Got so much bottom, it's amazing. So the bases that they have in this library, like it's very common to get a Rickenbacker in one of your bass libraries, but I don't think anything quite sounds like these. Uh, the recording process, the gear that they were being sent through, I think gives them a really unique sound. Likewise with the upright bass. Most of the time upright basses have a really kind of hollow center, but I feel that the upright in this library gives a really different feel. Now, usually I have to process the hell out of an upright to get it to sound good. And I am using some effects here, but even if I take the SSL channel strip off, it's amazingly even. There aren't any huge uh, bumps coming out of it. It was just recorded really, really well and programmed well so that all of the notes that you play on the upright are going to be very even. There are, of course, 
a lot of other basses. But we should move into some of our electric guitars. So check this out, 56SB Muted Pop. <laughs> I could hear that in a song. If I go to my effects, you'll he you'll see that I am, of course, using an amp simulator, using a Marshall stack. Check out that difference. I mean, that's a great way to start a song, right? We get into something like the cloud walk lead. So this is another one of those sounds that I wanted to highlight because it's so interesting. Now, that sound is interesting, but I'm adding a little something extra to it. Not only do I have the amp simulator here, but if I really want to go nuts with it, I can turn on Omicide. <laughs> with Omicide... Your ability to mess with sound is pretty unlimited. Basically, what's going on with this plugin, it's kind of amazing that they include this in Play now. It's on every library that you can buy for Play has this. And what it is, is a combination of multiband dynamics and distortion plugin. So up here, you choose your four different bands, and your crossover points are chosen with these knobs. You'll note that in the display above, they show you where those crossover points are. If I turned up the gain, you'd see some change in, in, the, uh, in the display. Down below, we've got shape, body, gain. We have a noise gate. And then we can choose our type of distortion. From porridge to valve. And there are different variations in the triple X and the odd. So you have these four bands, what you can do is you can actually solo the band because you have a little channel strip at the bottom. So that's the high frequencies here. I need to go in and choose myself a distortion. You can even mix the dry and the wet signal together. Here I need to choose a distortion type. Maybe I'll choose a vacuum tube. You can hear me as I uh, change the crossover point between bands. Now, it sounds really neat to use this on lead sounds and things like that. I highly recommend checking it out on things like percussion. It really, I, I believe that's where Omicide really shines is when you use it on percussion instruments. So if I was to do something like come up to this funk kit that I was playing around with, Go to my mixer, turn on the effects, open up Omicide. There it is without.
So as you can hear, you can do some really funky stuff in there. And it's very intuitive. You just go in, you pick your type of distortion, adjust your gain, your shape, mess around with the noise gate a little bit, and you get some really cool things to happen. So check out Omicide. It's built into all play instruments now. So any library that's supported by play has Omicide, which is pretty astounding. All right, getting down here, I had these heavy guitar chords. So it's just pretty awesome. There's your long chords. And if you hit it softly, you get a chug. I'm laying on the reverb a little heavy. Great stuff. This comes from the Ministry of Rock series, which is pretty awesome for your heavy guitar sounds. Another interesting sound that we have is spooky lead. The interesting thing about spooky lead is that if I go into the mixer, you'll see how much help I've been getting from the effects. Every section is turned on. Convolution reverb, SSL, Omicide, and Amp Simulator. Let's hear it without. So it's kind of a neat sound on its own, but throw it through an amplifier. And that's just to give it some drive before it hits Omicide. So in Omicide, I'm really treating the four individual bands of distortion very differently. And then the idea is after that, it's going to be feeding a convolution reverb. It really breaks up in an interesting way. Get up here to the SSL channel strip and I use that to control the tone somewhat and compress it a little bit more. So it's just kind of a fun way to show you how many possibilities you get with all of these effects. Okay, so there's some of the distorted guitars and the electric guitars. Getting into drum kits, these electric drum kits, it's very interesting. We have a 909, they call it a 908, of course. Um, the processing and the recording techniques that were used to create these drum kits make them cut through a mix like nothing else I've ever heard. I mean, that kick is enormous. The dimension on those electronic drum kits is fantastic. You won't find that in other libraries. Like, that built-in space is incredible. Now, granted, I'm adding just ever so slightly. Oh, actually, no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not using any effects. That's just the kit by itself. Listen to that. Now, one thing I really love is they include this library in their electronic drum kits called Old School Neve. It's a giant collection of electronic drum kits that were run through an old Neve. So they all just sound amazing. And adding these in on your electronic productions, they'll stand out, guaranteed. When we start getting into the ethnic instruments, here are the sounds of Tibet. Then we have a collection of ethnic drums on an 88 key keyboard. Now, if you use that one patch, you might have most of the ethnic instruments that you need for your percussion, but they have a ton of other things in their ethnic library as well. Getting into the solo instruments. So 
So that's a sarangi. And what I find beautiful about that, as far as how it plays in Goliath, is that usually when you get a sarangi and you're playing it, you won't really hear the rosin, the rosin of the bow, the way that it pulls and it and it pulls against the strings and the friction and these little details of how it's played. Here you hear it in spades, like it comes right through and it makes things just sound more alive when you play it. And we also have a wind instrument called a duduk. These instruments for these ethnic libraries were played by some of the best in the industry. And you can really hear it in the long, wavering vibrato that comes in at the end of that line. Underneath the duduk, we have a West African kora, which is a 21-string instrument from Africa. And it's a calabash gourd with a giant post coming out of it with 21 strings. It just sounds really neat. What I, what I like about how they captured this is that you have both the pluck and then the sort of glancing finger blow, like something that where you're not plucking it so much as you're rubbing it with your finger, which is beautiful. As we get into mallet instruments and things, we have a music box. A little bit harsh in that mid-range there. may want to uh, play around with that a little bit. Again, the SSL to the rescue. Let's check this out. A little bit of an organ there, huh? <laughs> Obviously, um, this is made for a Takata and Fugue organ. Nice and intense. Got a beautiful marimba. You know, good standard instruments, as well as really interesting things like, here's Bird of Peace. We're starting to get into the New Age libraries, and one thing that I really appreciate about the New Age libraries in Goliath is that they have these New Agey sounds that have attack to them. So you can actually hear where the notes are falling. A lot of times in New Age libraries, you'll get these things that have really long attacks. There's another one called Fallen. So if you want to get your Enya on. And then we have another one called Sundial. I personally love that because a good friend of mine, Kevin Kern, wrote a New Age album called Beyond the Sundial. <laughs> so it gives me memories. Now, getting into the strings, these all come from the Quantum Leap String Libraries. really great strings and I mean just going through the orchestral stuff like if I get down into our orchestra patches look at all this stuff it's amazing you have an entire orchestra in Goliath there's a brass section I just love that sort of mellow brass that you could like set way back into a production It'd sound really good we're getting into these really interesting piano and keyboard sounds. So we have the CP80, which is sort of a, a copy of a traveling piano that is used by, you know, Peter Gabriel and the likes. It's got a really interesting sound. It's a, uh, a piano that has real strings. It's a real instrument. It's not electronic. So it's got that really kind of... I don't know how to describe it. Really nice mid-range to it. Here's an interestingly designed creepy piano. The character of these sounds, just amazing. We have a Fazioli uh, piano. And what I love about this is listen to the distance.
there's this warmth to it and it kind of sets it back. Beautiful. And here's a Imperial 290 from Bisendorfer. It's another grand piano. Very grand sounding piano that has an extended low range. Good stuff. What they also have in Goliath that I find really interesting is some jazz oriented brass instruments. Like we have a tenor sax. We also have some cut mutes. It was funny because the minute I heard these cut mutes, it just reminded me of, of this song. If you listen to the end of MASH, it sounds exactly like that. So this is just a really well-recorded trumpet section with cut mutes. Now, they also have extended techniques in all of the brass instruments. So you get things like doits. So it has a shake to it. Really cool instruments in there. You should definitely check them out. Now, when we get into this library, we're getting into... These are called the storm drones. The design on these is fantastic. The sound design is incredible. can be used either for music or if you're doing something like trailer work. Incredible stuff. And you hear how it continues to grow as I'm playing it? Fantastic. Another one called Sand and Locusts. Beautiful design. It's all really low endy. It's got a lot of beautiful warmth to it because of how they were recorded. Everything that was recorded for these libraries was on state of the art equipment. Some of it vintage, uh, some of it modern. So that's obviously a synth bass taken off of a Yamaha CS80, which is a hard keyboard to come by these days. Really cool stuff. Down here, I had to put this in there, uh, Nick's Modular. This is Nick Phoenix's personal modular synthesizer. On the synth basses, if you use the mod wheel, you get some really interesting effects. Getting down into our synth leads. Beautiful CS80 lead sound. The classic CS80 brass sound. With the advent of our Blade Runner 2049 trailer that just came out when this was made, um, that definitely harkens back to Vangelis, who used the CS80 quite a bit. A lot of people don't realize that in the Goliath library, it's not just acoustic sounds. It's a lot of synthesized and sound designed sounds that are done really well. We also have a B3 organ with all of the rumble and weird filter effects that you get out of a B3. Farfisa. <laughs> Very cheese ball. And then down below, That's actually a Vox Continental, the infamous red transistor organ. So, appropriately named Goliath, a fantastic collection of sounds that you will not get bored with. And if you find yourself out on the road and you need one library to rule them all where you're, you know, in hotel rooms or if you're out playing on stage... This is the library to go to. It's a fantastic addition to whatever you have going on. Fits in any production and is a wonderful just Swiss army knife of fantastically made instruments. All right. So I would like to play you a demo that was made using just the sounds from Goliath. And I'll see you in our next cartoon. Take care. Ciao.